Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more Mandate of Heaven DLC for Total War 3 Kingdom's Perfect Start series, this time for Liu Chong. Now, Liu Chong is a commander, um, but he's a very archer specialist. Um, historically, he was big into his crossbows. So he gets a lot of benefits for uh, range damage for crossbows and rank for his uh, archer units. Um, his play style focuses on majesty and he has a trophy cabinet that operates in a very similar way to Luja's library. So you complete certain objectives and you get given items. Those items can then uh, be added to your trophy cabinet that will give you certain benefits. Um, so you have flexible bonuses based on how you want to play uh, and also um, requiring you to complete certain objectives to unlock them. Uh, he has Chen Peacekeepers melee cavalry who also have crossbows, they're pretty damn useful cavalry, and the Chen Royal Guard who are extremely powerful crossbows. And noteworthy characters, he has his uh, former Chancellor Luo Jun um, as a champion. So he has pretty balanced group at the beginning. Anyway, enough with the introduction, let's get into the game. 四海之内流言风起皆云天树有变汉作已终张氏兄弟揭竿而起意在诛灭无道昏君推翻汉王朝雄心野望如燎原之火一心难灭终至欲壑难填试问天下有谁能抵挡权柄的诱惑呢宦官们对汉室倾颓视而不见天下人无不设法为己身谋取利益而张角则盘算着要君临天下统御四海天子大权旁落皇后和宦官们争权夺利坐乱朝政战火已是一触即发不知要流尽多少鲜血才能使天下重归一统主公您是大汉江山的忠臣良将然如今汉室倾颓天下纷乱洛阳城内暗流涌动北地的百姓又因贪腐横行而揭竿举义我当好好整顿自己的领地方能立足于乱世虚心废治乱以御外敌为治下百姓带来太平此乃仁德正义之
tried to assassinate, well, successfully assassinated Liu Chong and Luo Jun for them withholding food after he had lost a huge fight against Liu Bu. So yeah, be very wary of him. He is not to be trusted. Mission issued. Liu Chong engages in the trivial matter of defeating bandits. You finally come upon bandits who attacked a local magistrate. You see a rabble of poorly armed troops. You sigh to yourself, perhaps you should have left this to your subordinates. But no, you are of the Imperial family and no task is beneath you. You gather your troops, trusted men all, and prepare to face the bandits. So we're fighting our old friend Bu Xiang. Very nice. Now, before we do that, uh, ancillaries. Family Spear, Wooden Ox, Clay Rat, and the Imperial Banner. Wait about the Imperial Banner. We're not going to deal with that just yet because it belongs in this trophy cabinet. Now, we only have Luo Jun. So, as far as things go for him, equip him with anything that you feel he should have. He already has a pretty good weapon, to be honest. Liu Chong, you could have this just for short term. And then, we're going to have a battle. Now, we're fighting a lot of cavalry. Normally, that is a really poor thing for a very archer heavy army to deal with. Um, we, of course, have some incredible archers in this army. We have, as well, these Chen Peacekeepers, who are pretty effective troops. But this, you know, is a fight where we want to watch ourselves. We don't want to lose too many men in the opening fight. Anyway, I'll see you in it. And here we are in the battle. So, two lots of Sabre Militia. We have one lot of Chen Peacekeepers. We don't want them to run away, but we do want this to be up and running. We're going to ship them to the flanks. Our Chen Royal Guard are brutally effective. Um, yeah, mixed missile. If we have a look at these chaps, just to give you an example. Big shields, spears, they'll be able to take the charge. They are useful, really useful troops. Um, sort of similar to like your your uh, jade dragon types, things like that. And these boys can sit behind them, hiding nicely. Liu Chong is pretty handy in a fight. Um, not the world's greatest, but uh, he's a champion, so he's not not miserable. Anyway, let's get this thing started. We're going to let them come to us, and we're going to shoot the absolute pants off them for as long as we can. Now, I don't want to duel. Uh, I want to try and capture him, because if we capture him and employ him, even if he's useless, which he may well be, we can always release him later, we get uh, the volunteer banner trophy. If we end up killing him or if we don't capture him, so be it. But if you do, as Liu Chong uh, manage to capture an enemy officer and employ them, you will get the um, volunteer banner trophy, which is quite useful. Right, all the arrows going in. These guys unfortunately have shields, so they're not going to die as quickly as one might hope. But they will still die. Now. <sighs> Up you go. These boys' rate of fire is not the world's greatest, as you can see. But they're not bad. They're not bad. Right, charge. Unfortunately, this is a static formation. They're going to flank us. So, off you come this way. Liu Chong, save you boys. You boys over here. Break formation. Reform. Bollocks. We've been caught. Static formation. Go, 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 go. Quickly, reform. These cav. Come here. Help, help, help. Ah, oh, they hit us on the side, so we're definitely going to lose some men. It's all right, though. Right, shoot them, make sure they don't come back. What are you doing over there? Get in there. Get in there. They are coming back. That's a shame. Get the arrows in. Fighting cavalry, unfortunately, at this time. Not ideal. Has to be noted. Not ideal. Right, our crossbows are going to have to tie them down. Right, gang up on him. He doesn't have any unbreakable or anything else, does he? No, he doesn't. Our crossbows have held. Not a bad effort. Not a bad effort. They are just crossbows as well. But 
yep, they've broken. They've come back. Right, reform out here. You're fighting him. You just kill them. Back over here, boys. They're not really charging, Cav, it has to be said. Um, they don't do it badly, because they're still heavy Cav at the end of the day. But uh, <clears throat> they don't have the impact of, um, you know, a, a Lance Cav, like the heavy Xiliang Cavalry, or your Tiger and Leopards that I absolutely love, any of those. They don't have that type of impact. But they're pretty good melee Cav. And they're pretty good archer cav as well. Not quite as good archer cav as Gongsun Zan's uh, white horse fellows, but they're still very effective. I do like them. Right, that's that. We're going to claim victory, decisive victory. We lost a few men, but uh, not too bad, not too bad. And so with battle one, we got some cash, some fortitude. Lost not too many men, so we're going to take the cash. And there we go. We have got our legend to spread. Having secured a trophy, Liu Chong displays it to the people. From the enemy general's body, you gather an imperial banner, one which had been taken in the previous attack. This was a gift from the emperor and not theirs to take. You secure the banner and proudly display it for all to see. So unfortunately, we didn't capture him, so we didn't get any uh, volunteer banners, but we did have the imperial banner, which if we equip now, we complete the mission for a thousand and plus one fortitude, minus two mustering turns, and plus two replenishment. Not bad. Liu Chong prepares for war. To equip an army for war, one must first develop an industry for the creation of their arms and armor. Constructing workshops will help stimulate the econ economic growth. So we've now been told to construct or upgrade a building. There's a really quick way to do this. If we have a look at Chen, here's Chen. This is empty. Government support, which is going to help this land anyway. Pop that one turn, it will be done. Now, these boys, we want to ship towards the farmland because there's a future problem appearing here. And with the spare money, we want to just fill out the force with some arch militia. Now, that's a very unbalanced army, you may be saying, and you'd be right. But again, there is a reason for this, which will be revealed later. But uh, safe to say it's to do with mission completion. Right. Following that, the usual thing have a look at diplomacy we have a trade deal so have a look here who we can get the best deal with now yuan shu is not a bad option because he has jade and he'll give you a lot of money but we're going to have to pay for that so first thing what i would do is go for tao Tian because he gives you the most negotiate a deal nice Another thing I would do would be to look at military access and look at military access with people who are going to be able to help you. So Zhou Xin and Cao Cao, they really want it, but they're way down in the south. They're not going to be hugely helpful. Um, but people like Liu Bei, who's going to be fighting the yellow turbans up here with you, will definitely be helpful. Unfortunately, he has no money to speak of whatsoever, so you're not going to get anything for this unless he happens to have any ancillaries that you can... Uh, negotiate with him for so things like the military g is not bad craftsman not so fast about for example he's got that uh and then you can offer him some food to settle it you know food and there you go have that there yeah, nice okay so we've got an ancillary, some uh, nice uh, military access that actually will be more useful for him straight away, but we will make use of it later. Liu Zhe as well, he's directly to the north of us. Uh, he's very close with Liu Bei as well. So negotiate with him. For him, it's a pretty straight deal. So do that and it will be good. You can try and trade it with other people. For example, if uh, Cao Cao or Zhou Xin want to pay you for it, take the money. Absolutely take the money. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that. You will already know how to do it. But that's turn done. I will see you in the next turn. And with the new turn, this will pop up here. You have constructed a building, so you have now got plus 20 prestige. Fantastic. 
We also have reached the faction rank of second marquee and been given 2,000 gold for it, which isn't bad. Power has increased to second marquee. And we are rewarded. Uh, we will reward Lord Jun for his loyalty to Lu Chong. So, long have you and Lord Jun worked together to make Chen a haven of peace and prosperity. He's a trusted man of singular talent, excelling in both military and civil affairs. You have a position open in your court and you are sure there is no man better for the job. So if we make Lord Jun Chancellor, we will receive a reward. And we have been given the mission to reach the faction rank of Marquis and will be given 2000 gold for achieving that. So first of all, go to the court, Chancellor Lord Jun, confirm. Very nice. The candidate here, Gan Li, is he any good out of curiosity? Oh, hello. He... He's not good enough. If there is a good character, absolutely hire them because at the beginning, you see, you, there's only you and Lord Jun. You need them. You really need them. Anyway, Lord Jun is rewarded for his loyalty and we will receive a reward from Lord Jun. The finest crossbow. Lord Jun comes to you, a wooden box underneath his arm. He sits while you offer him some tea, which he receives with a bow. My friend, you have been good to me and I seek nothing more than to be of service in our mission to calm these turbulent lands. With this in mind, I have brought you a gift. He opens the box, revealing an exquisite crossbow of singular quality. So we're going to go to Liu Chong and we are going to give him the crossbow because it'll be extremely useful. Now, Paxman Elements buildings. No, it's just Gan Li. We don't want Gan Li. Missions all done. Find his crossbow. That's just showing that. Right. After all of that, we will have extra trade agreements. But first, before we do that, we want to look at the reforms and select foreign envoys. We have land, therefore we should have more trade agreements. Then we're going to go into diplomacy and we're going to look at trade agreements. And we're going to see here that Yuan Shu has Jade and things like that and 373. So we're going to try and negotiate with him for this. He only wants a tiny bit extra. So if we just drop... There we go, 50 gold, and we've got a pretty damn good trade agreement. Another thing we could do is select from these two who we want. Chao Mao already gives us extra money, so and he's nearby, so we're going to do that. He also will happily pay us for the privilege, so collect as much money as you can from him. Um, if you want to trade for ancillaries or anything else as well, you can do that, but you will have to uh, pay a little bit of extra for the ancillaries. But that should be that. Right, we want to keep him moving towards the town. Another thing we want to do is raise an army here with Lord Jun. Now, Lord Jun's army is looking pretty pathetic. We'll drop in some archers, we'll drop in some spears, just to kit it out a bit, and we'll sit in the town. Always, as well, look at what we can do to upgrade. So. If we would say, let's upgrade the livestock farm or upgrade the grain farms, anything else. We go grain farms because it's uh, near, uh, quicker. And I think because we know that uh, Huang Xiao spawns here, He Yi spawns down here somewhere, uh, near Runan, I think. And then you've got the Jiang brothers here. We probably want some improved garrisons. So, and we want to control our fervor as well. Military building guard post is a pretty damn good option. Right, that's it for this turn. I'll see you in the next one. Turn three is a very uh, simple, quick administration turn, but you will have this pop up and we are going to be deeply involved in the mandate war against the yellow turbans. So pay attention to it. The Jung brothers. You hear rumors of three brothers of the Jung family from Julu County who've been gathering many followers to their side. It is said that one day while gathering herbs, one of the brothers was visited by an old man who handed them a book of three volumes, The Essential Arts of Great Peace. It was said that whoever held this book would be able to bring peace to all mankind. The group have begun calling themselves the Yellow Turbans due to the scarves they wear on their heads. And we have an ancillary of a foreman, which isn't a bad thing for us to have. We have... Nobody else. I mean, pretend. I don't like the greedy though, because that's just going to affect corruption and everything else. No, sorry, no, I really don't like you. Um, I know I said that before, but I equally don't like him. 
you can also pop this it's going to be overpopulation um so it's going to encourage you to build uh an or upgrade from the settlement administration which is this branch here obviously we're building other stuff right now but that will definitely be available uh, very shortly should you wish to do that chen is the cheapest option because it's a town and you'll upgrade it to a large town if you choose that anyway that's it for this turn they're just going to muster up and i'll see you in the next one turn four is also a relatively quick simple turn what you want to be looking out here for though is character developments because that's when you start to get a selection chen gong is pretty good mao jie is pretty good joe tai is pretty good I am going to recruit some of these chaps because I want them. Um, I definitely want Joe Tai. Definitely. Now, the question is do I want Mao Jie or do I want Compose, Fulfilled, Spiteful, Chen Gong, Distinguished, Cautious, Trusting? Hmm. Zhang Hong is meh. Right, I think I'm going to go for Mao Jie simply because even though he has uh, this minus four satisfaction, it's not really going to affect him. Um, he doesn't have the increased uh, desire for uh, independence. So we're going to hire him as well. Jotai is an extremely capable legendary vanguard as well. Um, so as you have the money, I do recommend getting him. What you could do with these boys, just whilst you're waiting for something to happen, is to um, give them, uh, for example, mustering or conscription or any of these assignments. Uh, it's up to you if you want to do that or if you want to save them for armies um, very, very shortly. There's a temptation, I think, to throw, where is he, Mao Jie into this army, just for the sake of it, and then to um, potentially throw Zhou Tai into this army. We don't have enough money for Zhou Tai right now. Okay, nothing else we can do this turn because we spent most of our money. Save, ask people if they wish to uh, buy any of our food. So what you can do is have a look down here, see if anybody is short of food and has money, like Cao Cao. Go to him, offer food, and see what he will give you for it. And I am looking just for hard cash right now, uh, just to see if it will give me the option to build something new, because we do want to constantly be building up this area, because it becomes a little bit of a war zone. Yes, they are. And with Tata as well, you could potentially give him military access and flog that for uh, regular payments, for example, plus a chunk. Oh, he can do quite a lot of these. All right, that's where it tops off. Do that and request a payment as well. And there we go. That's not a bad amount of money to come in. Very nice. And that now means that we can start to upgrade these areas as well, just a little bit more. Um, to complete the mission, all you need to do is do this. So that's precisely what I'm going to do. Right. That should do the trick. Everybody else is happy, mustering, looking good. Yes, it is. Right, I'll see you next turn. And in turn five, you will see the reason why we moved everybody where we did. So first of all, people are declaring war, which is fine, but we have this uh, and we have this mission complete because we recruited the missile infantry. So Liu Chong is completed. Our legend has spread. We've got plus 10 uh, public order faction wide and reduced uh, recruitment cost, which is nice. But we also have this mission issued. Liu Chong offers the edge of his blade to the rampaging barbarians. It seems that your advisor's words were of great merit. Word reaches you of small groups of bandits within your lands. Though you have no indication as to where they hail from, your only option is to save the people and gain glory by, in battle by defeating them. So we have three looter armies to defeat. We will get 1,000 into our treasury and we will get a call to arms, which is reduced retinue increase and increased replenishment. We also have graffiti. 
As you walk through a local village, you see three men in the town square. They are tied to blocks and a headsman stands above them. Their crime was spreading graffiti, promoting the yellow turbans around the village. Things seem to be getting out of hand with these yellow turbans. Well, it's going to kick off really soon. But, as I said, you wanted to move him here so he can support the farmland. You wanted to move him here so he could support the town. There we go. There's another army down here that we will deal with shortly. First things first. Don't really need to fight these out. Should be very, very simple. Slaughter them. Gain this. Uh, take the replenishment. So we don't really need the income. We have quite a good income. And just follow them down until they die. Delegate that. There we go. Nicely done, Lord Jun. Lots more money. More fortitude, more replenishment. That works for me. And of course, Lord Jun has leveled up. So we can go to this. And because we're going to be using him as a general, I tend to go across this top lot. Scare is fantastic. Uh, Gorilla deployment has its uses as well. We don't really need him to have any of that. Character ranks gained. Friends, how wonderful. Now, we have this chap here as well. He should be relatively straightforward. So again, delegate it. We have all these garrisons supporting us. It doesn't matter if the delegation doesn't uh, kill them off straight up. Ooh, Ingjin. Tough, trustworthy, temperamental. Yeah. I'll take him. He's not too bad. I'm going to take the replenishment. And there we go. We have defeated three armies. Interesting. Um, but that always happens anyway. And we've got, because we defeated the army in the opening uh, battle. I've just thought about that, and that will be why. Um, and we have got the call to arms. Fantastic. Ancillaries, a volunteer banner because we have hired someone so we can go and add that to our collection here and it'll give morale to spear infantry, which is quite a nice thing to have. And then what we want to do now that these have been dealt with, he mm, shouldn't be too much of an issue. But the main thing we want to do is move our armies up towards Ying Chuan. And we're going to aim for Ying Chuan farmland. Why do we want to aim for Ying Chuan farmland? Well, because there's going to be some problems heading up that way pretty soon. So, up we go. And I will see you next turn. With turn six, Dong Zhuo is now joining the war against the Yellow Turbans. Han Sui is declaring war on looters, as is Liu Xun. And Tang Zhuo is defecting. He is called Tang Zhuo or Tang Zhou, according to this. And a yellow turban officer, Tang Zhuo, has seen the error of his ways and surrendered to the Emperor. He has, been implicate, he has implicated others in the plot, who have been swiftly dealt the Emperor's justice. It seems the yellow turbans are planning to strike against the Empire. So we're building up to war. Character developments. Right, everybody is there looking good. We're going to keep shipping this army up towards Ying Chuan uh, farmland. Here we go. Um... Yeah, just, ah, it doesn't matter. You can just rush there. Now, I've noticed these chaps have decided that they are going to come nearby. So, we're going to see if they want to move close enough to be dealt with and just pop an ambush here. That should be thoroughly frustrating for them. Temptation as well to bring Zhou Tai into the force. Now, you may be asking, with a commander and a vanguard, why would I put two cavalry generals together? Well, first thing is because, as it stands, he has an archer-heavy lot. Um, and we could do with a more fighty uh, set of uh, soldiers in there. Second reason is because they don't have to stay together. We can split them up later, and certainly this army is going to need some reordering. We want him to have some more infantry, some more cavalry. Joe Tai can probably go and join this army for uh, the matters. Um, he'll fit in quite nicely there. But for now, we'll balance it out this way. And that's about it for this turn. I will see you next turn. 
With turn seven, we get some uh, fashion successions. Uh, we also have this, family affairs. You have made your case known to create a peaceful land for your people and those brave warriors looking to find a home. Yet your family, the ruling Han, demand your support in their ever-growing conflicts. Your family is important, of course, but so too are your people. So we can either lose diplomatic relations with them, but get plus 15 public order faction wide, or we get increased relations with Liu Hong. This is quite useful, but as you can see, everyone pretty much loves us anyway. So I'm not so fussed about that. What I'm going to do is support the family. Now, that can be ignored, but here, again, if there's someone who you want to hire, Shinyo is a very good option. Um, hire them because you don't have too many chances for great people in this game. Now, that looter army there isn't advancing. I'm not so worried about them. We're going to shift up here very quickly. What we're also going to do is pop him just about there and set up uh, ambush stance. The reason why we're going to do that <clears throat> is all for preparation for the uh, Mandate War when it really kicks off, because next turn it kicks off. So what you could do if you're worried um, about a huge fight, and it's not a bad option as well, is recruit a few more things to this army here. Some extra archers, probably not a bad idea. Some cavalry potentially as well. It's not a bad idea. Um, again, like this isn't the ideal way of doing, uh, of uh, arranging your retinues. Um, but things can always be changed later and you need to deal with what you need to deal with in the moment. This army is also moving up into support, and the reason why is because Zhang Bao here has a tendency to ignore Lu Zhe. He may just plow straight through Lu Zhe, in which case you've got a few more turns. Lu Zhe will lose, um, or he will come straight round and attack your farmland. If you're here in ambush stance, plus the garrison, you should be able to deal with him. If this army can be there in support as well, um, like for example, if... Uh, this guy is too powerful for you to deal with here. Just pull back and then your two armies can gank him next turn. It doesn't really matter how you want to do it. I like setting up the ambush because you can really damage him, his troops before he besieges you. All you got to do is cut half of his troops down and then the siege is pretty simple. Now, this looter army, this is the first time I've had them sort of stand there. They don't seem to be doing anything. They're a looter army that is spawned uh, for Yuan Shu's benefit, not for our benefit. So they've probably got a weird mission that I don't know about. When the Mandate War kicks off, as well as having to deal with uh, Zhang Bao up here, you have to remember Huang Shao starts off here. Now, Huang Shao is not really that uh, dangerous to you straight away. Um, he has to deal with Ying Xiao, Liu Bei, all of that. So don't worry too much about him. The one you need to worry about most is He Yi. He Yi kicks off in Runan. And there is a chance he will come up here and start to threaten Chen. Now, almost every time I've played this, He Yi has been smashed straight away by this army here. And to be honest, it looks like it's going to happen the same. However, if you have seen this army move away from this area, Keep one of your two armies in the south. Don't move Liu Chong up to the north. Keep him down in the south just so you can deal with that threat. Do a similar thing as you're doing up here. Ambush stance near your farmland. Anybody who comes near it is going to die. It's absolutely fine. Now, once you have defeated these armies that are threatening you, um, you want to start to advance into their territory to attack them. If Lu Zhe has lost her nay, then go and take it. If he has still got it, don't worry, you'll be able to move through that land because we've already negotiated the military access. Go smash in, take Ye, take her nay, take everything that belongs to Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang. Should be relatively straightforward because they're going to be attacked from all sides. You've got a relatively good army here, which you'll be able to constantly upgrade. If you wanted to, you can throw um, more officers into it next turn because your economy is good enough for you to do just that. Uh, if you have to rush down here to deal with He Yi, then you have to rush down here to deal with He Yi. If not, Yuan Shu should wipe him out straight away. So you wouldn't need to worry if that's the case. Like I said, Huang Shao has his own problems. You don't need to worry about him too much. The big issue up here is Zhang Jue. So 
Zhang Jue, you need to annihilate these chaps first, but once they're annihilated, you should have a solid enough army and a ton of food that you'll be able to send food all across China for money so that you can keep recruiting better and better troops. You'll probably need two armies to secure the north, but after a few turns, you should have Zhang Jue on the run and uh, you would have conquered pretty much the whole of the northeast, which will give you with Chen and Ying Chuan, um, and if you have an opportunity to buy Yang Zhou, uh, it's useful. But with Chen, Ying Chuan, uh, Ye and Ping, all of that stuff, you will have an incredible amount of food coming in. Like, unbelievable amounts of food um, early game. So you can support your economy just by selling food for gold. Now, um, your allies are obviously going to be supporting you with all of this stuff as well, but bear in mind that one of your current allies is not that great an ally, and that is Dong Zhuo here. So Dong Zhuo is going to confederate Ding Yuan. You need to bear that in mind, and that's around uh, turn 34, 35. So prepare to... Um, basically set up uh, diplomatic deals in advance because like I said turn th uh, 34 35 he's going to have confederated uh, Ding Yuan and your Emperor Liu Hong is going to die um, and that may start a chain of events that leads to Dong Zhuo taking the uh, Emperor and declaring war on you um, so you know be be aware that he is not to be trusted um, I have played this through now certainly as Cao Cao and again in one of my tests for another one of the Perfect Start series where Dong Zhuo has not taken over the Emperor. So there is a chance that event chain may not happen, but just be prepared for it. Do deals with everyone nearby who is more loyal to the hand than yourself. That includes Lu Zhe if he's still surviving, um, Lu Bei of course. Uh, Kong Rong and Yuan Shao will also leave. They're currently with Liu Hong, but they will leave. Um, doing deals with them will help you too. So yeah, they're the main things you want to focus on. Finally, Yuan Shu. The minute you can, try and get some sort of um, military deal with him so that he doesn't attack you. A non-aggression pact, uh, keep your trade agreements running with him, potentially even just give him one food per turn for free to keep things civil between you. Um, at the moment it's trending upwards, but eventually he is going to be encouraged to declare war on you because of his own faction state. But you want to have dealt with everything up here first before you have to fight Yuan Shu. So yeah, keep diplomatic relationships with him good, keep agreements with him ongoing if they start to fade away set up new ones so that he doesn't suddenly attack you in the south when all of your armies are up north dealing with Dong Zhuo and dealing with the yellow turbans. But other than that, this is uh, pretty much an easy campaign, similar to Cao Cao's at the beginning. You have so much food, you don't need to worry too much. Um, when you have conquered the north from the yellow turbans, it's plain sailing. Deal with Dong Zhuo, then deal with Yuan Shu, then everything else is yours for the taking. So. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you have found it useful. If you have, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe down below for more. We are doing every single faction in Mandate of Heaven DLC. And if you have tips that you think will be better, if you think you have a more efficient way of doing it, please feel free to leave them below. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.